I just watched a 13-minute propaganda video titled A Thousand and One Inventions and the Library of Secrets, starring Oscar winner Ben Kingsley as medieval Muslim inventor al Jazari. The film is about the scientific achievements of Muslims in what Kingsley's character refers to as the Golden Age of Civilization. Welcome to the Dark Ages, or as it should be known, the Golden Ages. We don't see anywhere near a thousand and one inventions in the video. I counted around seven, and most of those were modifications of things that had already been invented. So the video might be more accurately titled A Handful of Inventions and the Library of Exaggeration. The film is part of a touring exhibition that's been visited by millions of people and is currently featured at the National Geographic Museum in Washington, D.C. You can take your children there to be reprogrammed about the importance of Islam. Uh, excuse me, where are we going? From darkness into light, my young friend. As is usually the case with propaganda, the video is filled with kernels of truth mixed with barrels of nonsense. I'll be the first to admit that certain Muslims during the Middle Ages made some interesting contributions to science. The problem I have with these Islamic supremacist videos is that they tend to make it sound as if the Renaissance and the scientific revolution and pretty much all of Western progress came from Islam. For instance, Ben Kingsley's character al Jazari suggests that the Industrial Age wouldn't have happened without his work in engineering. In fact, I have no idea how the Industrial Revolution could have happened hundreds of years later without such a device. Not that I ever get the credit I deserve. He even tells us that because he built some clocks, without him, people today wouldn't be able to tell time. If it wasn't for me, thousands of people would be late for everything. As soon as I have the time, I'll set the historical record straight and respond to a few of the claims made in the video. But for now, let's pretend that everything Al Jazari says is true. And let's pretend that we just heard about a thousand and one bona fide Muslim inventions. As we sit here, filled with awe and wonder, we can't help but ask, why did Muslims in the Middle Ages make such amazing scientific discoveries? How did they build this golden age of culture and learning? If you've been paying attention to Muslim polemics over the past 15 years, you know where they're going with this. Muslims assure us that these scientific discoveries are the fruit of Islam. Islam is a fount of progress, clear proof that it's the true religion. That is pretty cool. This idea that Islam has something to do with science is probably puzzling to you if you've read the Quran, because the Quran is a scientific catastrophe. Surah 1886 tells us that Alexander the Great traveled so far west, he found the place where the sun sets. According to the Quran, the sun sets in a pool of murky water. Do you know what stars are, according to Muhammad? Surah 37, 6-10 and 67, 5 tell us that stars are missiles that God uses to shoot demons when they try to sneak into heaven. When you see a shooting star, it's because God became angry and hurled a star at a demon. The earth is flat, according to Surah 88.20. In Surah 86, 5 to 7, we learn that semen is produced between the ribs and the spine, and according to Surah 22.5, humans go through a blood clot stage during embryological development. On top of all of this, the Quran repeatedly claims to be perfectly clear, which means that reinterpretation is off limits. Take a look. If you dare. Now, religious beliefs can play a role in scientific discovery. Some of the main figures of the scientific revolution, for instance, believed that because the world was created by a powerful intellect and because we were created in the image of this powerful intellect, we can go out and discover the laws and principles that govern the world. Most of the time, however, scientific research is pretty independent of a person's religious beliefs. If you're a Christian doing research in the laboratory, you could probably do the exact same research if you were a Hindu or an atheist. But in Islam, there was, indisputably, a very close connection between religious belief, on the one hand, and scientific discovery, on the other. You see, Islam commands its adherents to violently subjugate 
non-Muslims. And as the early generations of Muslims obeyed this clear command, Islam built a massive empire that stretched from southern Europe in the west all the way to northern India and China in the east. But in a civilization that stretched from Spain to China, the golden rays of discovery and invention shone over everything. As Muslims conquered city after city in the name of Allah, they got hold of the books of the people they conquered. This is how Muslims obtained the works of Aristotle, for instance. Muslims gained knowledge by subjugating people who already had it, and with this constant influx of new ideas and new information into their empire, some Muslims did absorb the material and reflect on it, and in many instances develop it even further. But we have to draw a distinction here between Muslims, the people, and Islam, the ideology. Muslims made certain scientific discoveries, but the only connection between these scientific discoveries and Islam is that Islam commanded the conquering that brought science into the Muslim world. If we ask ourselves what scientific discoveries Islam, the ideology, has produced, we get a very short list. In the past 14 centuries, Islam has produced exactly one major scientific breakthrough. Time travel. Any society that truly accepts Muhammad's teachings is mysteriously transported back to 7th century Arabia. Why? Because part of the message of Islam is that Allah wants you to live and think and dress like a 7th century Arab. This is what makes time travel possible. The Quran is the flux capacitor in that diabolical DeLorean known as Islam. And if you jump in the passenger seat, you're not going back to 1955, you're going back to 625, when Muhammad was teaching his followers to dunk disease-ridden flies in their food and to drink water from ponds with dead animals floating in them and to treat their illnesses with camel urine. What civilization? The Muslim civilization, my young friend. So there were two forces at work during the golden age of Islam. Through military conquest, Muslims acquired entire libraries of data. And some Muslims and Muslim leaders used this data and even expanded on it. This positive force, the force of rapidly increasing knowledge, carried Muslim civilization a certain distance. But there was also the retrograde force of Islam, constantly calling Muslims back to a 7th century way of thinking. Why did science ultimately wither and die in the Muslim world? Well, since science in the Muslim world depended on conquering advanced cultures, scientific progress was doomed to failure as soon as Islam stopped conquering advanced cultures. Without the positive force of new insights and new research pouring into the empire, Muslims were left with the negative force of Muhammad's intellectually backward anti-scientific teachings. We can see the results all around us. Where is science in the Muslim world? Who goes to Saudi Arabia to learn cosmology? Here's an interesting comparison. Muslims make up around 23% of the world's population, yet well under one half of 1% of Nobel laureates in the sciences, physics, chemistry, and medicine, are Muslims. By contrast, Jews make up well under one half of one percent of the world's population, yet around 23 percent of Nobel laureates in the sciences are Jews. What impact did your era have on the modern world? Muslims today look around the world and see that their contribution to science is disproportionately small compared to that of other groups, and they're suffering from what can only be called science envy. But instead of looking at the root of their problem, Muhammad's teachings in the Quran and the Hadith, Muslims are busy trying to convince us that our scientific achievements are rooted in Muslim scientific achievements and that the Muslim contribution to science is therefore much larger than it seems. And remember, spread the word, this is a golden age. But let's face it, if I ask Apart from terrorist attacks, what has Islamic culture done for the world? And all Muslims can say is, well, a thousand years ago, guess what? Their little touring museum doesn't have much to do with modern science. What they've got is the Islamic version of Antiques Roadshow. 
And as I'll demonstrate in my next video, some of the antiques that our Muslim friends and National Geographic and Ben Kingsley brought to the show, they're fakes. Go on, Bill.